Uh, so this is Anwesha Chatterjee. Uh, she's going to talk us through understanding Git, even the scary parts. Yeah. <laughs> Who was anxious about the fact that his shoes were off, like, you know, color, different color on one side, different color? Anyway, um, yeah. Um, hi, there's many of you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been using Git for about three years now. Um, and it, it's been a journey because when I first started using it, I was very cautious about the commands that I used. I would like um, commit, pull, push. If um, anything went wrong, I would panic. Like there were a lot of you uh, that raised your hand for like, um, you know, the question that Michael just asked about who uses Git. Who has fucked up rebase in the past? <laughs> Yeah, like I can't actually see you, but yeah, like I, I know that it, it's a thing that not, it can't just be me, right? Like, <laughs> no, I still do it, but yeah. So I'd like to talk to you about my journey so far with Git and how I got more um, courageous with it because there's a lot of powerful tools um, that comes with it, and if you're just using it for the basic commands, it's not really um, using it to its full potential. Um, so a little bit about my journey so far in software. I didn't actually do a software degree, and not that Git is covered very much in uni anyway, but like um, a lot of it was learning through uh, the jobs that I had. So in 2015, I was a graduate software engineer in uh, Boeing, and I had never really used version control before. Um, like I knew of GitHub, I kept my code there, but like I didn't really like use it for the purposes of collaboration um, before that. So this was the first time I actually did that. I was very scared of it, like I said. Um, I relied a lot on abstraction tools like in PyCharm, like, you know, source tree, some of you might use that. Um, it's good to have that, um, can be very handy, but that abstraction is not the best if, um, you know, like if you're not familiar with the concepts, a lot of the time, you know, it, it's just, um, another layer of separation from something that is actually nice to kind of understand. Like, I just didn't want to deal with the command line or anything like that, which is, yeah, um, not really that hard. So, <clears throat> yeah, the reason why I mentioned Bitbucket is that it's got a similar pull request model to um, GitHub. So when you have a pull request, you can have multiple commits in it. And, um, what that means is that as a new developer, I had these uh, certain uh, things that I was doing that weren't necessarily best practices. So if I had a typo in so somewhere in um, my code, instead of amending the commit or rebasing it, I would push another commit into it saying fix typo or something like that. But logically, that's not like an independent commit. Like I should have just um, rebased it or amended it. Um, so as a result, my commit messages also didn't make a lot of sense. Um, didn't look exactly like that, <laughs> but similar. <They're>, yeah. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't uh, heard of commit logs from last night, check it out. It's good inspiration on how not to write commit messages. <laughs> Someone's doing some late night coding. <laughs> um, Anyway, after that, I started as a software engineer at Red Hat. Um, there, uh, a lot of uh, my project was um, open source. They're mainly an open source company, um, and as with that came a lot of like str more stringent rules. Like I couldn't just um, put in commit messages with no meaning. For example, we used Garrett for code review, which is um, a different style of uh, pull requests to GitHub and Bitbucket in that it only accepts uh, one commit message per pull request. So if you wanted to make a change to um, a certain commit, you would actually have to amend it. Um, because if you um, don't, then uh, it, the next commit, which is the fixing typo commit, becomes its own pull request. And it shouldn't be, because it's not really an independent sort of log logical uh, component. Um, the other thing that I will cover later on is the fact that as a result of this, I had to get really comfortable with rebasing. 
uh, rather than merging because merging creates merge commits and if you have a merge commit that becomes its own pull request as well which you don't necessarily want. So then I got less scared of Git, I think. I still have my moments. Um, yeah, but yep, this year I started at REA Group in Melbourne and made the move and um, so work on um, the front end of realestate.com.au. There's uh, we use GitHub for code review, but we um, like now that I know the best practices, it's uh, like I know what to do, what not to do with like having those multiple commits. And we definitely like when we merge into master, we uh, rebase rather than um, have merge commits um, as well. So I do have to get um, very comfortable with rebasing because we have a lot of people working in this project. And this is the first time pairing as well. Like I've never really actually pair programmed before. Now we have at least like a couple of people working on the same branch. So I have to like really um, use Git for the purposes of collaboration. Um, and yeah, a funny thing that happens is because our team is so large, often a large part of our job, like, like time during the day is staring at the build, waiting for it to pass, and then clicking mer uh, like, uh, like merge so that you don't have to rebase because so many people are constantly pushing <laughs> their master. So like, uh, it's, a, it's a race and then we you know, find out who recently merged and obviously you make their life hard and yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, now I think I'm a good rock star. No, not really. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, <clears throat> so some of the things that I needed to learn it, with Git in order to really understand it and be less scared of it are things like how its storage works, uh, what is a branch, and then eventually just getting more comfortable with uh, the concepts of rebasing and merging. So let's take a look at storage. Um, you don't need to know much about blobs, but it stands for binary large object. And just know that when you have a certain file in a Git repository, um, Git looks at that file in, as, as a blob. So a certain version of a certain file at any point of time is a blob to, a Git, to Git. To Git. Um, the next thing that you need to know is the tree object is something that is kind of like an inventory of everything that exists in a Git repository. Um, it stores information like file names, um, access modes, file types, and it also points to the blobs of the files. Um, the next object is a commit object, and um, this is probably the one that you're most familiar with. Um, it points to the tree objects, which in turn points to the blobs. Um, and it contains information like committer info, info author um, info, and not only does it point to the trees, but it also points to any parent commits. You might not have a parent commit if it's the first commit um, in a repository. Um, and if it's a merge commit, for example, it might have two parents, but we can see what that looks like later on. Um, so yep, subsequent commits point to the parents. So commit A was the first commit, then commit B, commit C, and that snapshot there is basically that tree object, right? So the tree object is basically taking a snapshot of a certain like uh, version of your repository. So this is the main thing that you need to know about in terms of storage, and you can go into like super duper details, and I've got references for all of that at the end if you wanted to dig deep into you know the computer sciencey stuff behind this, but um, for the purpose of this talk, this is enough for now. Um, so what's a branch? So it's essentially just a lightweight movable pointer to wherever, whichever commit you're sitting at in a repository. So in a certain repository, when you make a commit, uh, the pointer automatically sits at the latest commit. Um, but you can like have um, multiple branches. So when you first make a commit, it'll automatically be on master, but you can definitely create another branch. Like in this case, case my feature branch um, is uh, sitting at the same point as master. Um, and the way Git knows which branch you're sitting at is using another pointer called the head, and it's also known as a ref. So the head ref is going to point at the latest, um, uh, like at the, at the branch, which is also a pointer. So 
Armed with the knowledge of Git storage and branches, let's take a look at rebasing and merging and what the differences are and why you should choose one over the other depending on your needs. So this was what it was looking like before. Um, you have a commit C, master sitting at commit C, um, and you've branched off of that for your lovely feature that you create called my feature. And a super duper uh, productive person on your team has pushed another um, commit onto master, but you're um, still working on commit C. So you need to fix that. So you try merging. In this case, you didn't have any changes, but um, there was changes in master. So all Git would have to do is move the, um, move the pointer to the latest commit. That was easy, didn't have to do much. But if you've also been productive and you've created a commit E and someone else has a commit D, it's not a matter of just simply moving the pointer because there's two sets of changes. So if you merge, now a red commit called commit F is created and that incorporates the changes from commit E and commit D and encapsulates that in commit F. So this is what I was talking about earlier. The merge commit, the red one, has two parents. So now my feature sits at the merge commit. So if you keep doing that, if you know the productive person on your team keeps pushing commits and you keep working as well off of your branch, it, the stitching patterns of look will keep happening. So um, that's, can, that can get tedious. There's actually a better way of doing it if you like a more linear history. So going back to when you had a commit E and there was a commit D in master, let's try rebasing this time. What happens with rebase is this yellow uh, green commit is um, created and um, what that is, is basically the changes from your commit E, which was initially based on commit C, just based on commit D instead. Commit E from before is still there, but it is garbage collected later on because nothing points to it, so it's like it doesn't really do anything. So essentially, it's a more linear look if you look at the way that it works. Once that is garbage collected, E is kind of rebased onto commit D and hence it's known as rebase. So yeah, now my feature has a more linear sort of history. But the important thing to note here is even though this commit E star has the same changes as commit E, they're not the same commit. In terms of the actual commit object, it's a different commit object. So that's where things can get a little bit confusing. So it's important to know that that is something that happens with rebase. You'll have the same changes, but a different commit object. And in the demo, you might see what I, why I say you have to be really aware of that. So rebase and merge essentially do the same thing. They um, basically merge as a more of a stitching pattern look, and rebase is more linear. So um, there are many tips with which um, rebase can be done a little bit more nicely and just a bit more easily. Um, but I think most I'll cover most of the tips um, while I'm demoing because it doesn't make sense if I have slides. So let's do that. Um, right. By the way, who else gets anxious when they see like that? <laughs> I do. Can um, everyone see? <clears throat> okay. Uh, is that better? Yeah. Who? More? <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to make a directory called soup because I am tired of ordering um, Uber Eats and I want to start making some soup. So um, let me do that and then initialize it as a Git repository. And um, let me create a file called um, ingredients. And I'll add that and commit that. 
So once I do that, master branch is created automatically. Um, so I think I want pumpkin soup for dinner. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a branch reflecting that. And I'll start adding ingredients. This one, who else is annoyed that with the touchpad with Mac, you can't really feel the escape key? Yeah. Anyway, um, so I'll commit my changes. Right. So did that. And I know that I'll need onions as well. Awesome. So now that I think about it, I will probably need um, some kind of vegetable stock for all my soups. So I go back to my master branch and where I've made no changes yet. So nothing's there. So let me put in red stock. That's good. Moving back into um, check out um, pumpkin soup. Oh, shit. <laughs> do that all the time. Um, um, so yep, I'll add red stock to list. Once I do that, then I'll move out to pumpkin soup again. Now I want to merge master, right? So let's take a look at, actually, let's first take a look at my log. And there's a really cool way of looking at your log. Um, at least I think it's cool. Um, dash dash graph, dash dash one line, dash dash all. And it gives you like a visual sort of representation of what the branches look like. Um, just showing that here because I, if, if you can, just take a note of the commit hashes because I want to prove to you that with merge, the commit commits stay the same. So onions starts with 50, pumpkin starts with 96. So yeah, let's um, now take a look at what happens when I merge master. There's a conflict like I expect. So looking at my file, ooh, um, this is one of the things that I use. Um, so the, using a diff3 style, which isn't the default, you'll actually have to choose that in your git config. I'd like taking a look at my merged common ancestor because th that often helps me make the decision with like really complicated conflicts. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool um, diff style if you want to take a look. So yep, <clears throat> conflict resolved and let's take a look at what it looks like yep so I get add that and commit is as merge master into pumpkin scoop and now if I take a look at my logs you can see that the merge commit has been added but onions and pumpkin are still the same commits, right? So that's what merge looks like. There's just a merge commit there pointing to two different um, parents. So now that that's happened, let me go back to a stage before merging. If you haven't heard of reflog, it is a lifesaver. It looks really ugly, but it's actually really, really handy. So if you ever want to move back to a point of time where you know things weren't fucked up, Reflog is good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, you can get used to it once you read it. Um, so I want to move back to the point before I merged. Where is that? I think I want to, yeah, there. So let me move to that. Just take a look at what my log looks like. Yep. So I have uh, pumpkin, onions. This time, I'm going to try rebasing. So um, conflict again, like I expect. 
Um, so it's sitting at the first commit right now, the pumpkin one. So I resolve that. I just like doing git status all the time because I like knowing where I'm at, but you don't have to do that. Um, so continuing the rebase. Yep, again, a conflict. Actually, no, there was no conflict. Um, so auto-merging ingredients, and I'll take a look at what ingredients looks like, and it's got the three ingredients I expect it to have. So now the interesting thing to look at <coughs> is, first of all, my history is linear now. It's no longer that stitching pattern look that I was talking about earlier. The other thing to notice is that onions and pumpkin commits have different hashes now, so they're different commits altogether. This is really, really important because it has your changes, but if like you're working on a branch with someone else it, and they have those changes, it's going to be a completely different commit. So that is where you need caution. So you can use it like really, really well on your own, often in Red Hat because I was pretty much the only one working on my team. It was like I could be a lot more, yeah, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could be a lot more courageous with things. Um, but yeah, um, out here I, I can't, I can't do it. Like I've, I've messed up a lot in in uh, Red, uh, in uh, REA, um, and like it's easy to recover. It's just a pain. That's all. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, re 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 uh, is a really cool tool. So some of the things oh, I'll have to show you. I forgot to show you back then, but um, re yeah, this line out here, recorded pre-image. This is coming from the thing called re re re, and uh, what that is is just a tool in Git that records um, in any kind of conflict resolution that you do on a file. So if you find yourself making the same resolutions again and again, uh, like which happened to me quite a lot when I was working on big features, um, you can use that because then it saves you the pain of making the same resolution over and over again. And uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, um, I'll just show you in my config file. Um, so uh, yeah, if you Google that, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I think that's all of my demo. Um, but yeah, like I said, just use caution when you're using uh, rebase in public branches when you're working off of someone uh, with someone else, because uh, if you it might you might rewrite their history and it might seem like you've diverged, but really you haven't. It's the same changes and it's just a little bit messy. Um, don't push force. It's evil, and other people have to do <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like her face. She's just she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, don't be scared. That's the main point. Um, I used to be scared for a very long time, and then I realized that, you know, there's so much power, and, you know, you can just uh, recover from most things for the most part, which is pretty nice. Uh, Reflog is amazing. Get used to um, reading it, and um, it, it'll help you out. Um, the important thing is that you can't lose a commit. Like, even if I were to... Um, you know, when I did my uh, reset hard, if I were to go back and take a look at my ref log and get one of the commit hashes from before the mer before I did the merge, even though I did a reset hard, I can cherry pick that commit using that hash. So like, as long as you have that hash, you can't really lose a commit, which is heartwarming. Um, working um, on a different branch and testing something out is also a really good way. So especially if you're really scared of rebase, which come on, everyone is. So um, yeah, just work it, work it out in a branch. If something goes wrong, delete the branch, start again. I've done it so many times. So um, yeah, and like I said, reflog, reflog, reflog. It's awesome. Um, here's some references for, you know, if you want to know more about the computer sciencey terms and, you know, what goes on under the hood. Um, this was kind of like high level, um, but yeah, there's a lot of information out there. I'll share my slides on Twitter or with Michael later on. Um, hi. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs>